Hey, Mark from Bradus Guns here, and uh, I am out here with uh, Dave, one of my fellow uh, ingunowners.com members, uh, shooting a follow-up video to the M&P9 Shield um, introduction that I posted a few weeks ago. So we're out here uh, on a nice sunny afternoon. We're going to do some shooting uh, with this gun, and I've also brought a uh, Car P9 and a Glock 26 to kind of do a three-way comparison, uh, and we'll check for things like uh, you know ergonomics and shootability, perceived recoil, sights, things like that. We'll shoot uh, several different courses of fire to kind of test different aspects of the gun. Uh, and then we'll review our uh, results of those and uh, kind of give you some uh, closing thoughts here at the end. So uh, Dave and I will uh, get loaded up and uh, we'll be back. Each one of us is going to shoot the three different pistols uh, in each course of fire and uh, then we'll compare our results. So first up, we're gonna be shooting the Glock 26 kind of as our control. Uh, Dave and I are both Glock shooters, so it's, it's what we know, and it'll give us a pretty good benchmark against uh, which to compare the other two guns. So this first course of fire is just gonna be uh, seven rounds, slow fire, no time limit. Uh, we've got a uh, two inch target square there that we're gonna be shooting at, and uh, we'll see what happens. Go. Okay, our second course of fire is uh, just going to test uh, how well the gun comes up on target and it's going to test uh, trigger pull, trigger reset. We've got a two second par time. Uh, we're gonna run a couple of strings with uh, two shots in two seconds from the low ready. And then we'll do a third string of three shots in two seconds. Uh, we're shooting on an eight inch circle at a distance of about five yards. And again, we'll start with the Glock 26, then we'll go to the Car P9 and finish up with the Smith & Wesson Shield. Dave, whenever you're ready. Ready. Stand by. 1.86. 1.86. Shooter ready. Stand by. 1.74, three rounds in two seconds. Shooter ready. Stand by. 2.09. Shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. 1.39. Stand by. 1.39. One point six. Shooter ready. Stand by. One seven two. One point five one. Stand by. One point four eight. Three shot group. Stand by. One point five one. One point four eight. Stand by. 1.63. Three shots in two seconds. Stand by. 1.74. 1.5. Stand by. 1.36. Three shot string. Stand by. 2.28.
Okay, so Dave and I are done with our uh, informal testing of the uh, Smith M&P Shield uh, in comparison to the CAR P9 and the Glock 26. And uh, we're just going to discuss uh, some of our thoughts and, and some things that might have occurred to us, shooting impressions, what have you. Uh, because you can never really get a full picture uh, on evaluating a firearm until you've actually had it out to the range and got some rounds through it. You can only learn so much watching YouTube videos or handling the gun in a shop. Um, so this is kind of the, the other side of that coin. I wanted to make sure that we did that uh, to give you a, a little more full uh, evaluation of the gun. So we use the, the Glock 26 here as our control. Uh, as I mentioned, Dave and I are both Glock shooters, so this is naturally very familiar to us. Um, any surprises shooting Glock 26, Dave? No, no, no I, I really enjoy the, the very uh, present reset, uh, and the gun has a nice recoil. Okay. And then we went to the CAR P9, uh, which is a single stack, a uh, little bit lighter, a whole lot skinnier, and it's got a double action only trigger, so that's going to feel different from the other two guns, which are striker fired. Did you find that that trigger impeded you in any way, either in the accuracy portion of the of the shooting or in the speed? I was surprised I expected it to, uh, but in the speed shooting, I was able to shoot just as fast with it as I could others, even though it was a, a pretty long trigger. Yeah, it, it seemed like our times uh, on those strings were very consistent yeah. among all three guns, uh, so. Yeah, it wouldn't seem that the double action only trigger is any kind of a, a real impediment to right. a fast accurate shooting. I missed the, the reset and I had to remind myself to not mm -hmm. stop too soon right? like you do with the Glock, right. but uh, it works yeah. just fine. And I did find in the, the accuracy portion of it uh, that I was pulling some shots uh, low and to the left, which, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, if I'm shooting both the Glock and the car in the same session, because the trigger pulls are different, you, you got to kind of stop for a second and retrain the brain, retrain the finger, remember what gun yep. you're shooting. Yep. Uh, you know, had I to go back and reshoot that string, you know, with the car in mind, I'm sure I could do much better. But you know, just cold, uh, and I haven't shot this gun in a while, so uh, you know, it, that did show an effect of that uh, longer, heavier trigger pull you know, versus the Glock. You, right. you can't shoot to reset; it's not quite as crisp. Right. And then finally, we finished up with the uh, M&P9 Shield. Um, which to my way of thinking kind of gives you the, the best of both worlds. I mean, it's a very slim, uh, lightweight, single stack profile, but it's got a uh, striker fire type of trigger, very kind of Glock-esque mm -hmm. uh, trigger, although I still didn't feel that the reset was, was nearly as crisp. Yeah, no, it's not as present. Yeah. It's there, but it, it's yeah. not as, as crisp. Definitely an improvement over the standard M&P line, uh, but still not you know what you might be used to if you're a, if you're a Glock shooter. Uh, I did find, however, that the, the gun was very comfortable to shoot and, and ran especially well at speed. I mm -hmm. mean, the you know my groups in that third shot uh, sequence with this gun, uh, it was very good and it felt very, very comfortable and, and all my shots were on target. So it's definitely a gun that uh, uh, is pretty easy to shoot, I think. Right. Well, let's take a moment and then talk about recoil because okay. we talked about trigger. Uh, recoil, I did see a difference in, in the pistols that we just tried. Uh, the car, I felt, had uh, significantly more recoil. Not uh, a bad amount, but just uh, I could clearly see it had a, a more recoil. It's a fairly light pistol, mm -hmm. and so I think that's probably why I was feeling a little more of the felt recoil. Right. I can't say that it really harmed coming back on target for subsequent shots, just that it was slightly more present. I, I didn't think it was quite that dramatic of a difference uh, between the car and the, the shield, but I'm more used to the car. I mean, I've owned yeah. them for years, I've shot them, so you know, I'm more accustomed to right. you know, how it does feel. Um, I would say that, yeah, it's a little more snappy uh, mm -hmm. than the shield, but uh, I didn't find that to be a, a measurable degree, especially okay. you know in rapid fire under the you know pressure, quote unquote, yeah. of the clock. I, I really didn't notice it. It seemed to me, though, with the shield, I was able to get the sub uh, on speed, able to get those other shots, and it felt like I was able to hold that that tr uh, target, the uh, sights on target, better. Uh, maybe that's what you were talking about. You know, it felt good at speed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if the bore axis is closer to my hand or what. Mm -hmm. it, it just seems like you can really hold it right on where you want to go. Was there anything uh, about the shield that you didn't like from a from a shooter's perspective? Um, nothing really big comes to mind. Uh, it had the extended uh, magazine on the one that we shot today. Mm -hmm. I think if it had 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 the standard magazine, I probably wouldn't like the fact that my little finger was probably falling off uh, right. the, the, the magazine. I like to feel that that okay. full grip. Yeah, we did use the uh, extended magazine in the uh, shield and in the Glock 26 to get as, as consistent an overall length in the grip among right. all three guns right. as we could. Um, so uh, the, yeah, the, that, that will make a difference yeah. in how the gun handles. Now the, the sights were, to me, were very similar on all three. They were just three white dots. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't anything that stood out about any of them. 
yeah. you know, from the site's point of view. Although, to its credit, the Shield comes with a good set of high contrast white dot sights. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Glock, I had to add them. They're oh, night okay. sights. On the okay. car, I had to add them. They're night sights. Okay. So, you know, as far as stock sights, uh, I think the Shield wins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are going to continue to gripe about the safety. You know, we didn't use it in, in this exercise, uh, so that's still out there. Uh, you know, I personally probably would not own one simply because none of the other guns that I own and carry have a manual safety. Right. And if you're going to have a gun that has a safety on it, you better train to use it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a big fan of keeping things as consistent as possible. Right. Not saying a manual safety on a gun is a bad thing. Uh, I'm just saying that if it's there, uh, you need to train to right. use it. Uh, and I'm not willing to make that departure from everything else that I carry uh, and, and go out of my way to train a specific manipulation for one gun. So, you know, I won't be adding one of these to my arsenal, but, uh, you know, I have no problems based on what we've seen today to, to recommend them. Yes. Uh, especially if you're a fan of the M&P or own full-size M&Ps already, this is a very natural complement uh, as far as for concealed carry, you know, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. Right. Um, you know, throw it under a t-shirt and an inside the waistband holster and uh, right. you'd be good to go. But It's, it's uh, not a pocket pistol. Right, it, right. It, it still has some size. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we'll just have to wait for the single stack Glocks to come out. Yeah, someday. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.